good morning and a warm, warm welcome to this special Friday homecoming chapel. It is absolutely wonderful to have that buzz in the room, uh, a buzz that represents students and faculty that are here, but a whole bunch of friends and family who have returned uh, to spend the weekend with us. So we're grateful for that. We are ready. We have prepared the Concordia family for you to come home to us under the theme, We Are Concordia, A Living Tradition. Today's special thanks to Matt Dimmick, uh, who has been sort of leading the homecoming preparation team. We're grateful for not only his message today, but his work with that team and all of his friends who have made ready uh, our weekend. We thank that homecoming team also for their hospitality and chapel leadership this morning. Also to Michael Colleton and the, um, the chapel choir for your gift of music that will be ours in a few moments. We're, th we're grateful for that. I invite you to stand for a call to worship. Give glory to God who is our light in our life. Let us pray. God of our vocation, today as we return to this place of learning and love, our stories remember work and rest, studies and playtime. So, bless it all. Continue to be among us as we celebrate a living tradition and celebrate you. In your name and for the sake of the world we pray. Amen.
The Holy Gospel according to Mark. One Sabbath he was going through the grain fields, and as they made their way, his disciples began to pluck heads of grain. The Pharisees said to him, Look, why are you doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? And he said to them, Have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need of food? He entered the house of God when Abithar was high priest and ate the bread of the presence, which is not lawful for any but the priest to eat, and he gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, The Sabbath was made for humankind and not humankind for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Word of God, word of life. Good morning, everyone. My name is Matt Demick, and I'm this year's homecoming chair. Uh, and for those of you who don't, uh, or who have ever met me, sorry, um, you know that my family is a bit different. Um, I have a bro two brothers. One is 19, and uh, his name is Tyler. He chooses to wear flannels to everything. Um, also drives his giant pickup truck through mud whenever he gets the chance. Um, fixes cars for fun, and uh, adorns himself in everything camo. And then my youngest brother, Seth, who's right in the front row over here. Um, surprisingly, he doesn't have his lacrosse stick or his X Xbox controller today. So we're glad that he could be here with us. And then there's me, and I don't really fit into either of those categories. Um, I like music, and I don't like camo. Um, so <laughs> as you can see, within my immediate family, we just have a little bit of differences. Um, and then, obviously, I have my dad and my mom and my grandma. Um, and then we have... Five cousins total between the two sides. Pretty small family. Um, two on my dad's side and three on my mom's. And even, you can see the differences between me and my small family. The differences get even bigger. Um, they're all girls except for one, which is different for our family, so that's fun. Um, and needless to say, we, leave, we live within about 20 miles of each other, so we have a lot of family gatherings. Um, and at these gatherings, we have plenty of traditions, uh, playing the dice game on Christmas, getting white elephant gifts, passing a Native American nativity set around uh, from year to year. Um, and we celebrate, uh, we grill on Mother's Day and to celebrate all the May birthdays and the moms. Um, and the most important of them all is Grandma's Jello. Um, Grandma makes the most delicious Jello I've ever had in my life. Um, yes, it comes from a box, but there's no water. It's uh, melted ice cream. And then. Cool Whip and sprinkles to match any season that we're in. And it's literally the best Jello I have ever had in my entire life. Um, and it's not just me, the whole family thinks so. Um, and it's usually a fight to the end to see who can get the last piece of Jello. Um, we usually grab the Jello before we grab any ham on Christmas or any uh, green bean casserole on Thanksgiving. Uh, it's just kind of how it works. Um, and yeah, so the Jello is pretty, pretty special to us. Um, we. <laughs> We've realized over the years that like grandma makes the best jello. No offense, mom, but if you make the jello, it's not as good as when grandma makes it. Or um, if the whole family's not together, uh, it's not as good. And so I've come to realize that it's not the physical jello that matters, it's the fact that we eat it as a family and that it matters so much to us as a family. Um, we gather around no matter if we're sick, tired, annoyed with each other, sick of seeing each other for like the 15th day in a row. Um, we all enjoy that jello. And we all enjoy seeing each other. And so I've come to realize that Jell-O is symbolic for our family gatherings. Um, you know, we ha try to have it every time we're together, and it's really just special. And um, actually, my grandma made Jell-O for today, um, and it's like in my apartment, so I can have it with my Cobber family now, instead of just my uh, home family. Um, but when I think of other traditions that like I have, like getting dressed up um, and going to a Broadway show every year with one of my best friends from high school, or with my two best friends, um, we spend the last day of summer going to play laser tag and mini golf and bumper cars pretending that we're 13 again. Um, I realize that it doesn't really matter, that the, tra the tradition itself doesn't matter. It's the people that I surround myself with. Um, that's what really makes a tradition. And if we look to the reading for today from Mark, um, Sabbath was created for humankind, not humankind for the Sabbath. So the tradition is made by people, and it's made for the people, not because of, we need the tradition itself. Um, so trying to understand this a little more, I looked through my previous church experience. Um, when I was growing up all through middle school and high school, once every two months or so, my church youth group would make caramel rolls. Um, we'd make about 150 dozen caramel rolls for our church, um, which is no small task, but it is a lot of fun. But when I look back at that, I don't remember eating the really good caramel rolls. I remember the flower fights that came from, and, you know, when we were making the flour and we're getting up at 6 a.m. to put them in the oven and smelling it throughout the entire church during the service. Um, 
And then I look at, you know, at church as a whole, you know, the Christian faith. Christmas is obviously a pretty big deal. Um, we, put a lot of, we put a lot of stock in Christmas. And Christmas has a lot of traditions that come with it. So um, I just wanted to look at, like, baby Jesus in the manger. You see that everywhere. You see cookies, Christmas cookies, all different kinds of Christmas cookies, but it's a cookie. Um, Christmas trees, lights, um, the whole shebang. Everything is decked to the nines, and we celebrate it year to year. Um, and it's one of the greatest things, yeah, I mean, it's one of the greatest things that ever happened to the world. Um, obviously, Christmas is. But we look at the people that we surround ourselves with. We surround ourselves with people that we love, that we cherish, and whose company we enjoy. Uh, those Christmas gatherings are magical for multiple reasons, but it comes as no surprise that we love celebrating them with the people that we love the most. Um, the gifts, the songs, the snow angels and snowball fights, the Christmas ham, and the delicious cookies have nothing on the time we get to spend with our family and our friends, um, whether it be at three different church services on Christmas Eve or fighting over different jello at my aunt's house. Um, so now you're probably all wondering what this has to do with homecoming. Because um, <laughs> obviously homecoming started on Sunday, and it's been a phenomenal week so far, and I couldn't have asked for a better senior homecoming. Um, and of course, homecoming is based on traditions. And as a whole, Concordia is based on traditions. Um, we strongly encourage every freshman to wear around this ugly yellow hat on the first week of school, um, you know, just because that's what we've done for many years. Um, we spend hundreds of dollars on these little gold rings um, just to say that we have a gold ring and so we can see people across airports or in Argentina or you know, anywhere we go and have that conversation about who a copper is. Um, and you, if you're like me, you stand in line for an hour and a half uh, before you get your ring just to make sure that you're the first person to get it so that you can tell that to people when you see them. Um, <laughs> People storm Prexy's, prom, Prex, Prexy's Pond right after graduation, um, you know, even though Prexy's Pond is probably the most disgusting lake I've ever seen in my life. But people still do it, and I think it's just because it's a tradition. Um, homecoming is a tradition passed down from year to year, incorporating new ideas and keeping the old. For years, we've had the biggest bonfire, um, the biggest bonfire I've ever seen, and people gather around, listen to Ernie Mancini release the beast one more time, um, and get pumped to crush whoever we play in football that week. The alumni all gather around the table on Friday night at the banquet and on Saturday mornings at their alumni breakfasts to talk about the good old times. And past members of the Concordia Choir get up during the homecoming concert and intermingle between everyone uh, and sing Beautiful Savior, uh, bringing tears, chills, and memories to everyone in that room. Um, but obviously, while the traditions stay, the creators don't. Um, they can't come back for homecoming one year, or they're no longer with us, but they still seem to happen. Uh, we still have a bonfire, although Ernie can't come, so thanks to Eric for stepping in and doing that this year. He did great last night. Um, the alumni still come back and see the place they've called home for so long, but they don't come back to see the, to see the, uh, the bell tower that they love or um, Prexy's Pond or Oli and Lena. They come back to talk to the people that they miss. Um, they come back because the tradition of going to Concordia has made an impact on their life. Um, they come back because this place is filled with people they call family. So we're all Cobbers, regardless if it's your first homecoming or your 50th. This place remains special and the traditions stay alive because we make it happen, not because of the tradition itself. Homecoming has a very special place in my heart because of the spirit, community, and tradition that it brings. And um, I'm so happy to be a part of it. We are Concordia, and nobody can change that. I hope you all have a great homecoming weekend. Soli Deo Gloria.
Please, please bow your heads and pray with me. Let us pray for this community, for the church, and for the world. Almighty God, grant that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Hear us, O God. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Hear us, O God. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Hear us, O God. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Together we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, stand for a final blessing. May the God of our coming home and going forth bless us, Father, Son, and Spirit.